Hello everyone, happy evening, a very good evening. I hope and I believe all of you are doing well. Uh, a quick note everyone, am I audible and visible? All right, that's great. So I hope you are done with your uh, INICT exam and it has been a good exam, I hope for all of you. Um, a quick take on how the exam was based on whatever I've seen. So uh, the exam uh, was tricky, I believe, uh, right? There were questions which were a few direct repeats also from the previous exams. And there were other questions which seemed very easy, but yes, they were tricky. So like always, INICT exam, I think there's a lot of your, uh, you know, the MCQ solving skills, how well you are able to rule out the options, logically guess the answers, right? So INICT, I believe is heavily based on that. So someone who has, now, you know, first your foundation is good, your concepts are good, and then your MCQ solving skills are good. You will definitely do well in your INICT exam for sure, right? So uh, radiology, overall, what we saw is ophthalmology. There were a lot of questions in ophthalmology, which is generally a short subject. Then there were a good number of questions from ENT as well, but ophthalmology, there were a lot of questions. Uh, major subjects like uh, PSM did not have a lot of questions. Surgery also, there were not many, many questions in surgery. And of course, like, you know, uh, the short subjects like uh, dermatology, psychiatry, I mean, there were hardly any questions uh, from these subjects. So path, according to me, what can be considered a good score? I personally believe that looking at the competition, uh, you know, the level of preparation of students that we are seeing from the recent NEET PG exam as well, uh, the cutoff, I believe, will go high as compared to the previous exams. And uh, I, I personally believe that uh, a top ranker, like someone who's getting rank 1 to rank 10, those students getting 170 plus correct will not be a shocker for me at least. Uh, I believe that definitely they would get 170 plus uh, correct. And then uh, based on that, you can make a gauge that, uh, you know, how is going to be the score. Like last time, the INICT top ranker 1, uh, got a score of approximately 166 to 168. That's the uh, net score, right? Deducting the negative marks as well. So that is what gives you a top rank. So it all depends on how many you have attempted, how many you've got wrong out of that. So the final score is what is going to be important, right? It is not just only about, about getting the right answers. It's also about not getting the wrong answers, right? The negative should be equally less because that also is affecting your rank significantly. Right. So a score of uh, 167 to 170, I believe, is going to be in the top range, like the top 10. The score is what I'm talking about, the net score. And then uh, 155 plus correct should be a good one. Yeah. So this is what it is. The cutoff definitely is going to go high. Yes. So we are uh, going to discuss uh, the radiology questions. Yeah. Okay. So radiology also you did not have a lot of questions. The short subjects were not very significant in this uh, session, I believe. So let's quickly consider the radiology questions here. And like I said, the questions were definitely tricky, right? So if you can think logically, you can apply the concepts, you can integrate, then, then you would have definitely done well in this exam. So first one here, identify the arrow mark structure here. Guys, what do you think is the arrow mark structure here? What do you think is the arrow mark structure showing here? Absolutely right, Anuj, very correct. See, when you are given the options here, you can make a gauge from the options itself. They are not asking you the branch of the internal carotid artery or um, even the vertebral artery because predominantly the branches that you are seeing, uh, you know, they are eccentric branches. It is not routinely from the circle of villus, right? So look at the image here. This is an MR angiogram that you are seeing here. The artery that is marked here is this artery here, this artery here. Now, you know, this is what I say the MCQ solving skills is all about. Now, one artery that you can see is going to the brain inside, right? Actually contributing here in the circle of villus. This is what is going to be the internal carotid artery. 
okay that is what is going to be the internal carotid artery so close to that this one is going to be external carotid artery and if you know at least that external carotid artery the two terminal branches that it gives the superficial temporal and the maxillary artery right so this artery which you can see here going here in the temporal region so what branch of external carotid is this going to be this is going to be the superficial temporal artery right so this is going to be superficial temporal artery here that you are seeing here the superficial temporal artery is one of the terminal branches of the external carotid so if you had the knowledge of the anatomy the branches the terminal branches of external carotid you could identify that this is external carotid and not internal carotid then this would have been easy even if you have not seen the image right Trust me guys, you know, when you go to the exam, it's never going to be even for a top ranker, rank one, that they know answer to all 200 questions, right? It's all about connecting the dots, integrating and applying that makes all the difference in your scores and the ranks, right? So logically thinking, you can see the artery which is here external here. This is a branch of external carotid artery. This is going to be superficial temporal artery. Okay, this is what is going to be superficial temporal artery. Here also you see here. Superficial temporal or iski jo dushri branch aayegi yaha pe maxillary region mein jo jayegi that's going to be the maxillary artery. Okay, clear with everyone. This is superficial temporal artery. Going to next one, this we have discussed right investigation of choice for ureteric stones or colic. It was majority of the questions if you see in the exam they were clinical questions, long stem questions right. Uh, there were few one liners also right match the column were the easiest of the all right especially in your set four but then majority of the questions were clinical long stem questions so reading from the last line the trick that i always emphasize upon reading from the last line is what is your time saver that proved to be the time saver in this session as well right so investigation of choice absolutely right all of you are correct it's going to be non-contrast cd which is the investigation of choice for ureteric stones right because these are the calcified stones. The urinary tract stones we know are calcified stones. And for calcification, CT is a good investigation. You just want to see the stones. You can best see them on the non-contrast CT, right? The non-contrast CT. Yeah, this was an easy one and a simple one, right? Calcified stones, non-contrast CT. Gallbladder stones, they are not calcified stones. So for gall stones, we do ultrasound. Okay, so for gallstones, we do ultrasound, right? So this was an easy one, uh, right? So this is going to be non-contrast CT here. Okay, this is going to be non-contrast CT. Going to the next one, an elderly man presents with seven-month history of dysphagia and bad breath image is provided. I think, you know, in many of your questions and the image-based questions as well, the history was very significant, right? They help you, they lead you to the answer. Even when you cannot identify the image, but then the history was very important there, right? So look at this, the, from the history, you know that elderly person with dysphagia, halitosis, third component we have is regurgitation, right? And they've given you the barium swallow image. You can see a diverticulum here. So based on this, this is going to be Zenker's diverticulum. Right, this is a Zenker's diverticulum. Remember, this is upper esophagus diverticulum. It's a false diverticulum, pulsion diverticulum, posteriorly directed diverticulum, uh, right? Uh, so all that we know about Zenkers. What surgery is done for Zenkers? Dolmen's procedure. Remember, Dolmen's is done in old man. So Dolmen's procedure is done there. Okay, Dolmen's procedure is done there, right? So these were the questions that we had in radiology, guys. That was a quick recall here. Uh, any other questions in radiology, right? There was one more question that was given. An uh, elderly patient, 65 year old, uh, right? Elderly patient, 65 year old, X-ray pelvis, both hips was given. X-ray thigh, femur was also given, right? And they'd shown you in the image, the left hip, like, you know, the bone, the left iliac bone, the left acetabulum was destroyed. There was a light tech lesion in the femur as well, along with a pathological fracture, right? That was one of the question there. And you had options like, what is the likely diagnosis? Is it metastasis? Is it eosinophilic granuloma? Uh, third option was disseminated TB. And what was the fourth option there? Like, I believe yeah, the fourth option was brown tumor, 
right the fourth option was brown tumor right that was given right so even if you look at the clinical history right based on the clinical history the age of the patient elderly 65 year old the way the bone was destroyed in the left pelvis right and also the lesion being there in the femur as well right the left hip and another lytic lesion with pathological fracture all this put together right metastasis is going to be the correct answer here okay the most likely correct answer here is going to meds because eosinophilic granuloma generally the age group here is a child right the age group here is a child okay so then it's going to be metastasis yeah uh, man the next question there was this chest x-ray image you were given a chest x-ray image and uh, uh, right there were but bilateral opacities were given right there were bilateral opacities which were given the opacities i think two options had interstitial infiltrates right two options said that these are interstitial infiltrates seen with mycoplasma or or bacterial pneumonia something like that but the image that was shown it was not a interstitial infiltrate right it was not like reticular pattern or not reticular nodular pattern it was more like the confluent opacities that we were we could see and it was more like alveolar infiltrates okay it was more of alveolar opacification so i believe the two options of interstitial were straight away wrong because it was not interstitial uh, what were the other two options uh, what were the other two options I think uh, other option was uh, one was related to aspiration pneumonia, right? The aspiration pneumonia is common in uh, some segments of the upper lobe and the lower lobe were given, right? And there was one more option which basically uh, spoke about. Uh, yeah if you see the infiltrates like this along with mediastinal or hilar lymph node it is suggestive of tb or fungal pneumonia and i think even malignancy was given that was one option so according to me uh, this option seems to be a better fit here because interstitial malignancy and bacterial pneumonias generally do not cause interstitial you know right Incorrect, nahi pucha tha. I think correct pucha tha. what fits into the diagnosis that was asked. Incorrect, nahi. correct pucha tha as far as I remember. Well, was it incorrect among them? Yes. Right. So that is something, you know, that, that recall we need to get uh, correct and look into it. Okay. See, if incorrect was asked, because I personally believe the correct was asked, what is based on the chest x-ray, what is correct? If incorrect was asked, the bacterial one option where they said that interstitial infiltrates sick them, pyogenic and bacterial pneumonia, that is incorrect. But if correct was asked, which is the best fit out of this, then this option fits the best where uh, you have a hilar mediastinal lymph node, the TB and the, TB and the malignancy one, right? Uh, next question, the tree in bud appearance that was there, it was not actually like the radiology, radiology question, just the tree in bud was there, but the options that you had were the microscopy voila findings that was asked, right? So remember that a tree in bud appearance radiologically, what does it indicate is a tree in bud basically indicates that the infection is spreading, the pathology is spreading endobronchial. It is spreading endobronchial and then it is causing the nodules. We have seen that tree in bud is seen in TB, but it is not specific for TB. It can be seen with aspergillus as well, right? Any fungal basically which is causing uh, bronchiolitis, bronchiectasis, anything which is spreading through the bronchi can give that tree in bud appearance. So from the radiology point of view, this is what I can tell you for tree in bud. Okay, tree in bud, yeah. Yes, 
right so the next part of the question will be taken care of by uh, pathology or uh, medicine faculties okay so tree in bud you have to remember it can be tb it can be that fungal as well right but low ada hai, so less likely to be tb so it would be like fungal yeah but that's what we are seeing with the recent years like you know even the radiology images are not like straightforward images which are asked like you see in the inict as well it is not the simple like you know uh internal carotid branches puchli eccentric with superficial temporal puchli so radiology questions are more like you know more integrated questions where you'll be have to integrate with your anatomy knowledge medicine knowledge right and uh, that is what will basically help you for radiology as well it's an integrated subject and that is where your integrated knowledge also helps yes all right guys so that was the about the radiology recall my final take on the exam is um someone who, uh, who had read well right whose concepts are good mcq solving skills are good so basically the top rankers are going to score good in this exam it was not like a very difficult exam or on the or questions that were asked the topics that were asked they were not very eccentric right uh but yes they were tricky right so uh it's all about mcq solving skills jiske achche hai unka rank achha ana wala hai second point in none of the exam whether you have appeared or will you will appear you must have learned that you will not know answer to all 200 questions you have to take logical guesses right that is what is actually the game changer right so for example you had question in pharmacology the parp inhibitor just based on the drug name the parib you know you could make a guess so if you could make that guess aapne padha nahi hai wo drug but still you could make this guess you could apply the logic in the exam kisme parib aa raha hai to matlab ye shayad parb inhibitor hoga parib if that that is how your thought process was and you marked the answer even if you didn't know the answer that means your mcq solving skills are good and you know you're doing going to do well in the exam okay so i believe work a lot on your mcq skills practice a lot of questions especially if you are taking a drop like mean this is not your first attempt for the upcoming neat pg or inict exam please don't just keep reading the notes or uh, the theory and the content start learning retrospectively now start practicing more mcqs and learn the skills on uh, ruling out the options logically guessing the answers okay that is actually the game changer okay all right thank you so much everyone for joining in you have rest of the subjects coming in uh, for the recall for today so stay tuned for the recall for the rest of the subjects and all the best for the results as well would we'll be waiting to hear from you right thank you so much everyone thank you mm -hmm.